Graham, let's have a quick reflection on, on last night. It was a solid performance from your side, wasn't it? From from a team that was a, a lot of players who haven't had a lot of game time to play. Yeah, I, I thought it was an excellent performance. I um, thought uh, it was everything that um, we possibly weren't in the previous game. You know, I think there was an intensity, there was a commitment. And, and when I say uh, you know, a commitment, I didn't mean that our players didn't work hard on Saturday. It was a, a commitment to the action that you're doing and a, and a full belief <coughs> rather than commitment, a belief. And um, and I thought we looked uh, in between, but last night we were, we were full on straight from minute one. Every action we committed 100% to. Um, we pressed exceptionally well. We were connected. We didn't overthink things, and um, and we created loads of chances to score. And um, yeah, it was it was great to to watch. And um, you know, we need to have that um, week in week out in any performance from any eleven that we select. And that's the um, the uh, the purpose of having a squad is that um, there's selection um, decisions to be made. And, um, and I've certainly got that in my hands uh, right now. A few weeks ago. You making ten changes would have been a little bit alien, wouldn't it? Like I don't think you'd have been able to to, no. to potentially do it. But no. you know, the fact that now you can do it is, shows that you've, you've you've had that selection heading. Yeah, I don't think um, you know we uh, in the last game against Chelsea. I think we made maybe eight or nine. I think, um, and you know, and we'll continue to do that. I, I, I value this competition. It's, I think it's a brilliant competition for for teams at our level. Um, great opportunity to to go all the way to. The, the you know the best stadium around in Wembley, but it gives the opportunity to players that haven't played in the previous league game to go and show what they can do and uh, and, and get up to speed, you know, stay in the rhythm, whatever it is. Um, but you know when you <coughs> excuse me, when you put the the team out last night, you know you couldn't have said that was a weak team or um, you know you couldn't say it was a reserves or anything like that. If you look through it, it was a, it was a it was a, a really good team, really strong team. And um, and they all performed exactly to their maximum. That's what I would say. From young and old, they all they all performed exactly how uh, we need them to um, going forward. Um, there were some some <coughs> great individual performances, but I think one of the, the, the standout stories I think from last night was was that of Michael Kelly a couple of weeks ago sat by his phone desperately <laughs> waiting for somebody to phone him, and then all yeah. of a sudden he's he's yeah. keeping a clean sheet. It's a, it's a terrific story, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a great great start for him. You know, um, <coughs> not, you know I can't take any credit for it whatsoever. It was it was Herbal who, um, when the, uh, the injury happened to Nathan, that um, he said, "Look, I've got a, a goalkeeper in mind who could fit the bill perfectly. You know, come in um, on a short-term contract to start with, show what he can do, uh, prove his worth. But I think he's got great potential. And um, so I trust Herbs, I trust all my staff. And I said, right, I'm good. on that recommendation alone, I'm going to." Um, Bring him in and have a look at him, and uh, yeah, he's he's impressed us in training. Um, he spoke really well, Herbs, about his character and his personality, and we've seen that. Um, but he, I thought he was um, very good last night. I thought he, uh, he his kicking was good, his his um, control of his box was good. He and he made a really important save in the second half. Um, you know, when you, he wasn't tested a lot last night, I would say. Um, I thought we defended exceptionally well. Um, but we had to deal with he, he dealt with in the right way. So um, brilliant to see. You know, this this sport football is opportunities come along. You got to be re ready for it. He was ready for it. And he was he was um, desperate to come in and show what he was what he's about. And um, I thought he did that last night. But um, you know, let's make sure he can he stays on that sort of continual path of improvement and and um, and push Craig. Um, MJ came off at, at half time. Yeah, it looked like it was planned. Uh, semi semi planned. We knew he, 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 we were never going to put him through ninety minutes. Um, he's, he's been out for a long while, so we just wanted to. Um, we did speak about a certain amount of minutes, or I did with him in the morning. And he said, "No, I feel great." So I said, "Right, let's just see how it goes." Um, at half time, he, he uh, I spoke to him. And he said he felt great, um, uh, and I think he was desperate to continue. Um, but I thought it was a great positive. For our Tick after his name after the at the end of the night and uh, and uh, we decided to to bring him off to make sure he can you know uh, train later in the week. He's still you know he's still um, a potential risk because of his lack of minutes over the last month. But um, as you saw from uh, Callum Tripp when he came on, 
um, just continued the, the, the performance that um, MJ had done in the first half and uh, and fitted into that position really well. So it was great to see you know, uh, a really experienced player doing ever so well in the first half and then a really young and inexperienced player do just the same. It was, um, you know, it was a really pleasing night for, from those two guys. Um, your assistant Chris <coughs> last night spoke about how important <coughs> MJ is, is to the way that you um, certainly started the season. I yeah. know he was only in the team for about three games yeah. before, before he picked up the injury. But how, how has he been a, a, a big miss and you know, how big a player can he be for you? Uh, look, I th I th the, the one thing I've consistently done is when um, players are missing through injury or suspension, I don't, uh, I don't want to um, talk so much that we can't perform without them. And uh, and the players that are playing or taking their opportunity when when they're not available, are valued players and and can contribute. So I think it was Dawson that came into his his sort of slot and and we won games after MJ missed. So um, but we know over the course of a season what we need to do to to achieve our goals um, and listen we, we targeted MJ we, we spent a lot of time trying to get him here and um, and he showed in those first few games how, how valuable he is to us but he's not the only one there's there's several there's more than 11 important players for us everyone's important for us because they'll all contribute to to wins and performances but um, yeah he's been there before he's won promotion a couple of seasons before with Bolton, and um, he came here with the the intention of helping us be successful. So, I think he's been a miss on the character and personality side, and and the I'll say the confidence he gives to other players around him. You know, when you this is the big thing when you when you're building a team, a squad, you, as an individual, you got to look to your left and your right and think, no, that's a decent player, and they're committed and, and we're in it together. And I think MJ is one of several that give us that sort of confidence. I'm sure I've run through every single player that played last night. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. So. <laughs> Jack, Jack Payne um, obviously had a yep. goal scoring start last yep. night um, and lo has looked really, really lively, I think, in you know, every yep. performance he's made. He certainly made an impact when he came on on Saturday. You know, th yep. They're the sort of players that you want, aren't they, to, to be looking over your shoulder when he's, when he's on the yep. substitute bench to, to call upon. Yeah, I think. Um, I think he continued where he left off on Saturday when he came off the bench. Um, he continued that in in training on on Monday and Tuesday morning, and then last night. He's hungry. Um, he's a talented lad. Uh, we know that. Um, but he's hungry to to be a, a a regular starter for somebody. You know, I think he's had broken spells of in and out of teams, and I think he's determined to to try and cement a place somewhere. And um, you know, if he continues to play how he how he did last night and how he did when he came on. Saturday, and he's got the best chance of doing that. He's, um, we want players who take what they do in training into games, whatever the situation. I'm a footballer. I'm going to commit. I'm going to commit to the tactical side of it. I'm going to leave my lungs out there. I'm going to work my what's it's off for, for every team teammate I play with. Those players always tend to do well uh, for my teams and, and play a lot of games. Um, so. Um, Jack has got strong competition in, in that midfield area. I think we've got real good players in there, but we need competition because we, we need everyone at it. No one can uh, feel comfortable. Um, winning isn't comfortable. You can't be comfortable and, and win consistently. You have to put yourself in, a, in an uncomfortable place and uh, a place that's right on the edge. And um, we need strong competition to make sure that every player is, is at that. It's part of my role to, to create that as well. Um, and. Um, I feel certainly after last night's performance um, that we have strong competition throughout the whole team. I suppose now you can you could be looking at elements of that game from from last night and thinking we need to replace that from what we saw last Saturday and replicate it. On, on uh, basically, the whole performance. Yeah. I wouldn't say elements. I would I would say from minute one, everything we did in and out of possession was exactly what we're looking for. The work ethic at the of the team, superb. The commitment to every action, was superb. We defended as a team. We attacked as a team. We got so many bodies in the, in their box when we were attacking, um, but when we were defending, you could see that the compactness of the team. Everyone was from the front two; they were connected to the rest of the team and making it really difficult for Oxford to to have a sniff at a goal. I think they had one opportunity, really clear opportunity in in the whole game. They're a good League One seat side. Um, I went to watch their last game in this competition. They played a strong team there as well and beat Northampton. So we knew it was going to be a tough tough uh, game, but it was a great game for us. Because you know there was no question marks after about the level of opposition that we played against. So you know as a as a balancing, we we knew it was a good team, in good form, 
and, and at their place and, and our players were, were superb so um, for me that's I thought that was the closest uh, performance we had to Wrexham um, a complete performance and um, um, it's, I, I don't care who I pick uh, you know, but I think the players will, will I think most of them understand it. I think one or two maybe need to to get to grips with that. That um, I'm a performance-based manager and, and selection, and uh, everyone has the opportunity to play. So um, last night for me was a, a blueprint. We went away from it, and I I take my um, my role in in how we prepared the team for last week's game after the Notts County game, and I don't think I got that right either. Um, without taking responsibility off everybody, but I certainly play my part in that. Um, but I learned a a harsh lesson last Saturday um, about what our squad needs in preparations for games and um, so um, I won't that, make that mistake again um, Back to League 2 action then mm. on, on Saturday and taking on the Sunday <coughs> team that have struggled in the last few weeks um, I think their only win is, is, is on the opening day of the season but you've said plenty of times there's, no, there's nothing easy about, about any game in League 2 It's completely irrelevant it's completely irrelevant. I think we could have said that about Crew before we played. I think they'd won one game, and then I think they've won three hundred shots since then, haven't they? And, and wherever they are on the table, it's, it's irrelevant. If we like, if, if we set our standards by who we're playing, then we're letting ourselves down and we're doing ourselves a disservice. So, for us, we are, are rather than our opponent, we have to look at last night's performance or our performance at Wrexham and and, and a couple of other games and say that's our benchmark. What we have to reach. Um, regardless of who we play, where we play, uh, what the circumstances. So for me, um, this and Sutton showed on, on on day one what they can do to teams, and it's a tough place to go. I know that I've been there before with, with Salford. So um, um, listen, we have to look within ourselves to set our, our levels and um, and compete at the hardest and highest level. Um, anything less than that, we're letting ourselves down. We're letting the supporters down. We're letting our families down. Um, we have to have full commitment. That's the only thing I'm asking for. If 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 we make mistakes and get beat, but we fully commit to everything, I can take that. I can I can sleep at night. It's not nice. We want to win, um, but if we don't do that, um, it's a sour taste in the mouth. And that's what we've had for uh, leading up to last night's game. But the players and the squad have responded exceptionally well last night. Um, would expect to zip around in training today and on on Friday going into the game. But we have to have to take that into the game there's no good training well on a Wednesday and not performing on a Saturday we have to be um, game players and uh, that's what we'll be looking for on Saturday and like I say a really tough fixture it, it sounds obvious doesn't it when you say it like that you have to replicate what you do in training and mm. on the pitch but, but why, why do you think there is sometimes a, a block in there right, well it's, yeah, listen I've been there as a player you know, and, and until you learn how to um, sort of control your emotions and your thoughts you know and uh, not get um, Sort of sidetracked, distracted by you know the crowd, the game, you know what it means, where the league table, what the league table shows, all those sort of things, and and uh, you know and you know criticism comes from, or you know outside criticism comes from performances in games. It doesn't come from training because no one sees that. So that's that's the thing. So you know there's a, um, I would say a you know, more risk taken in training, or you know sort of just a freedom to play and. Uh, um, yeah, but the you know the the best player the, the best not I wouldn't say the best players the best professionals take their training straight into the game and it should give you confidence you should, but you should you have to think about it you know you have to think about what I do in training and you, and get confidence from that and then take it forward you know we try to give the players that that um, that freedom to make mistakes and take risk and and uh, play anyway you know I don't my big biggest criticism of any player is when they don't commit and don't and don't work as hard as they can that that's it you know. It's not mistakes. It's never mistakes, you know. Because I know that every every game of player, every single player, and manager, and former player, made mistakes in every game. All the best games you can remember. Oh, I was great in that game. You 100%. You made mistakes in that game. You know what I mean? But you just continue to do it. So, um, no, it's it's part of professional football. You know, it's, there's there's loads of players, past and present, that are, you know, not made the grade, but they had really good talent, but couldn't switch that 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 uh, mindset into performing on the, the biggest stage and that's the it's it's the biggest factor I believe you can see some great great players in training and you know in the parks pitches and that and they've got these moments you know what I mean and then and but you they wonder how they never made it yeah right. yeah and, and but professional football and consistency of performance and consistency of mindset and approach and professionalism all that that's all 
that's all stuff you have to learn and put in, in into 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 place. If you don't have that, then you're going to be fluctuating from performance to performance. And um, so we have to have a consistency how we train, how we, and that's where I, I sort of took responsibility a little bit, a little bit more for for last week's training because I think we went off a little bit in between the Notts County game because of the type of game that was because of the weather and the opposition. And I think we continue that, and we should have gone back to what we were doing before, and uh, and we didn't. So um, that's something that I I needed. Well, I did learn over the, over the weekend in, in my preparation of the team. Um, but that's not to abscond people from their responsibilities on the pitch. You know, we we um, we, we're in this together. We have to take account, uh, have accountability for what we do, and and it is about what we do. We can all say and talk about a great game and what what we're going to do. It's about actions. Life is about actions. It's about what you do.